It's DBS dialing in for another episode of Electrosexual. This uh, episode is number five, and um, where we left off, and it's been so long, so I really uh, am sorry I didn't uh, do this sooner. i uh, just been really busy the last couple years, lots of changes in my life. Anyhow, um, so we left off was uh, when I got back from Europe, I believe that was in two. 2008, and uh, basically when I got back from Ibiza and seeing Dance Valley in Amsterdam and Sensation White, as well as um, Global Gathering in the UK, we went out to Barcelona and Stonehenge, and just the house movement out there was incredible and basically changed my life. I knew there and then that I wanted to be a DJ. I'd already been DJing for about a year or so, but I was like really into techno and hard trance, hard dance, that sort of stuff. So I really wanted to switch it up and, and kind of infuse the Electro House vibes in with the uh, very techy like roots that I had. So I came back with a new vision and a plan, a plan of attack that within five years I wanted to be a world-class artist and within ten years to be a world-class producer. So um, I went about my plan. I got on to digitally imported radio as a resident. I host Electrosexual once a month, the very first Monday of every month at 9 a.m. Pacific. And I always have some really cool guests on there. So I'm up to episode 54. That's just over four years now that I've been pumping out beats on DIFM. It's one of the largest online radio stations in the world for electronic dance music. Um, I play alongside Sandra Van Dorn, Carl Cox, Ferry Corsten, Lazy Rich, um, to name a few, there's so many amazing, incredible artists on that show, actually. So uh, I started that, I believe, in about 2010. I had a residency that we started in Calgary at Sal's on 17th in 2009, I believe. We started on Tuesdays at Sal's and then moved to Thursdays for our second year. And we had uh, some amazing guests. Uh, performers come through like Neighbor, Calvatron, Keith Baby, uh, quite a few others uh, and we just held down that night for as long as possible and then uh, that's when I decided that I was gonna move to BC. I put in a ton of work into the Calgary scene but Calgary just wasn't doing it for me anymore. I'd lived there for about a decade so I wanted to change things up, kind of get back to my roots, back to the mountains where I came from and to be inspired by how amazing it is. I really enjoy Kelowna right now. I chose Kelowna because I'd been out here before and had a few shows or gigs or whatnot through some promoters um, that had hired me out here. And um, I love the weather and the lake and the mountains and the people. I mean, we got some amazing talent and shows coming out of the Kelowna area, you know, like Sticky Buds and Downlink and Detsik and, uh, you know, J-Pod, Excision. And so I saw it as a really good opportunity for me to base my operations here. That way I could get out to the island and play out there and play out in Alberta and Saskatchewan as well, kind of being in the middle. And since then it has inspired me. I mean, um, everything has taken off for the better, so I know that I made the right choice in the end. Um, it was a great move, great decision. I really wanted to come out here because they have an excellent audio engineering an art school out here uh, called Cato or Set of Arts and Technology. However, after doing a little bit of research, and I understand that you know it would have been beneficial for me to learn ins and outs of audio engineering and kind of figure out all of the aspects that go into uh, making. Uh, music uh, that totally would have interested me, but uh, unfortunately, the program ran for I believe what is it, uh, 23 months or something, or 22 months, 
and was $32,000, plus they have no guarantee that you will even get a job in your field when you graduate. So having just paid off my um, my student loans from my business uh, diploma at SAIT, I couldn't really justify spending that kind of uh money again on something that, you know, if I would have put that money or borrowed that money and put it into a studio or into private tutoring lessons, then I definitely would have been producing. So I went on the mission, which many of us actually do, and that was just to learn how to produce on my own. So I've been in Kelowna, I worked at the bank for a year, and then they laid everybody off, they closed down, and so I was on EI, which is like uh, fucking awesome, because I was getting paid to basically be a DJ and to learn how to produce. So I've been working hard at it in the last couple years, I've lived in Kelowna now for about three years. Um, you know, just, just touring around, setting up shows where I can, playing, you know, Shambhala, Burning Man. Uh, this last summer was actually one of the most intense summers, but um, I'll save that again for a different video. But So basically, I wanted to kind of wrap up from about 2008 to about 2012 when I moved out here. So after hosting shows and uh, running a residency called Technosexual and then running my um, residency on DIFM, Electrosexual, and then just uh, pumping out beats as much as possible and in the studio, uh, learning how to produce uh, my own kind of style. I mean, it's coming along slower than I anticipated, but um, everything is actually going according to plan. I have about three more years in order to make it to that world-class level. I think I've achieved my goal of being a world-class uh, DJ because I am known around the world. I have quite a few fans on Facebook now, so I think that everybody is really enjoying the positive vibes um, and the good music that I'm sending out. In the background, you can hear some of the tracks that I was uh, remixing and producing, and I've just been working on doing a lot more of that recently. So, um, I hope that uh, this video finds you well, and that if you guys have any questions, um, again, my name is Zara Lee. I know a lot of people always ask me how to pronounce my name. It's like Sara Lee, but spelled with a Z or a Z if you're American. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's Zara Lee Grace, and um, I'm living in Kelowna, B.C. Uh, I've got a few upcoming shows I'm pretty excited for. Um, let's see here. On the 20th, I'm going out to Fort Mac. This will be my third time up there. I love those guys. Uh, they sure know how to party <laughs> for crazy, crazy amounts of partying that goes on up there. <laughs> So I'm actually opening for a buddy of mine that I was camping at Burning Man with and the whole time I had no idea who this guy was but I knew that he was another DJ, another producer and uh, so I asked the guys up in Fort Mac because they mentioned that I was opening for some Aussie and I was like, oh, well, who's this Aussie I'm opening for? And they're like, oh, it's Crazy Daylight and I was like, really? Because like, my tent was like right beside his the whole time at Burning Man. I had no idea who he was. And it turns out he's also really good friends with Steve uh, Roland, who's been tutoring me on uh, music production for the last couple years, so, or a year or so. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. That's September 20th in Fort McMurray. And then after that, uh, I don't really have a show until October. I'm working on a date for November 1st. Um, uh, but for October 31st, Halloween night, I will be playing in Regina for my homies at Boss Chair. Totally awesome and uh, super excited, opening for another Glitch Hop producer named Papa Skunk. So hopefully uh, the next couple months I get to kind of work into uh, some of my own original work so that I can play it for you guys. I mean. It's always a hope. I don't know if it'll actually pan out or not, but we'll see. Um, I'm working hard every day in the studio, so hopefully I'm going to make it happen. The next uh, kind of project I'd like to work on is getting out to California. 
I made quite a few friends down there that are really excited uh, to have me. So I want to make my way down there maybe for the winter, uh, November, December, something like that to kind of get away from the Canadian cold and uh, down into warmer weather where I can be inspired and I, apparently that's where everyone goes to, to make it big. So wish me luck. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please email me at missdeviousbookings at gmail.com. And, uh, of course, as always, for the love of music, keep it DVS. Check me out at SoundCloud, Facebook, and Twitter at DJ Miss DVS. Thanks for watching, and hope you guys had an amazing summer. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.